more and more stars from the entertainment world are objecting to a war in Iraq. Is it fashion or conviction? My guest today is one of the best known names in pop music around the world. What would he do to end the crisis? George Michael, a very warm welcome to the program. Thank you. Nice to what? meet you. Why Iraq? Because it's fashionable? Oh, God, no. Um, I have absolutely no desire to be here today. I've got absolutely... Uh, I'm really reluctant to be here. Um, Why? Simply because, in all honesty, I was kind of first out of the trenches in terms of entertainers that were going to get behind something which would divide, which at the time was so divisive that if you're approaching a subject as divisive as Iraq was six or eight months ago, then you're taking a big risk as an entertainer because you're going to um, alienate a lot of people. And I did very, very quickly. And I was completely um, uh, pilloried, really, for having the audacity to be a pop star who's in the mainstream as opposed to a rock star or, you know, uh, some kind of protest um, singer. But, but I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity, is there? I mean, oh, the, there is. Oh, there if is. Did you see particularly the publicity? If your, particularly if your record sales are falling in some Did areas? you see mine, though? Did you see my pop publicity? Did you see any of it? It was absolutely dire. And I'd, I'd like to, to add, uh, I have absolutely no... Um, my record sales are not falling. I released two singles six years after my last album. And my, my fans are now 35, on average, right? There was a, there was a piece on... Um, Channel 4 about three or four months ago where an artist was challenging Woolworths because they were not stocking their records and they so they had a representative of Woolworths on and this woman said well we've done our market research for Woolworths and we know that the singles um, market of 2002 is teenage girls between the ages of 12 and no 11 and 12 that was as wide as it got 11 and 12 the only reason I have to release singles um, as someone with uh, an audience of 35 plus is that if you don't release them as a single in Britain, you can't get them on the radio. I don't want to compete with, you know, Pop Idol and uh, the various, various young people in the charts that are roughly half my age right now. I'd rather just release my albums. But you say you're happier to have a big debate than a hit single. Really? Absolutely. You must be the only one in the business then. I think I probably am. I think I probably am by now. I've had 20 years of this business. I'm never on the television. Never. I never do TV. I'm phobic about cameras. I have no interest in promoting my music beyond making videos. But you never protested at the height of your fame, did you? Well, of course I didn't. I was 19, 20, 21. What were you doing when you Massive were 19, 20, 21? Well, a lot of people at 19, 20 and 21 were on the streets marching, weren't they? For what? Against, against Vietnam, for Yes, instance. I know, but I was too war. young for that. Well, um, this been, is my been time. There's been other wars since, haven't there? This is my time. I do understand what you're trying to say. But the fact is, um, I really have no concern about uh, being uh, accused of needing publicity. I've been supposedly over four times now. I, I broke up Wham, so it was over. And then I took on Sony and took two and a half years out of my career, over principle, by the way, uh, which was a useless principle because now nobody wants to pay artists, let alone the record companies. Um, I then was over, and so I was over because of that, because it was two, three years out of my career. Then I was over because I got arrested, and now apparently I'm over because I took on politics, and I, I'm not in any trouble. I've so you're not them. looking for the publicity, then what are you scared of well, about I'm looking the confrontation for with Iraq? What okay. You, what, what scares you so much? Well, I think before we move on to that, before we move on to that, as you did accuse me of using, uh, and I know it's it's part I of this program. I didn't accuse you. I asked you. Okay, you asked me. Okay, as you implied, we'll change the wording. As you've implied that I needed publicity, I have to tell you, why on earth would I be here today after what happened to me? I I did release the single against the um, uh, against the. Uh, the advice of the record company that was releasing the single, very reluctant, against the advice of my manager, my lawyers. Um, everyone told me radio will not play it. These days, the control that the government has over radio and television is phenomenal. They won't play it. I didn't believe them. All right, so you took a risk then. And I lost. Your and I lost. So why am I here? I lost. So tell me what you're so scared about in Iraq. I'm not scared about Iraq. I'm scared about Mr. Blair and his attitude to the future. I think we're at a watershed moment 
12, sorry, I'm sorry, September the 11th was the first part of this watershed moment, and this is the, the tail end of it. September the 11th was so obviously directed at America to provoke a response, and the response was supposed to be revenge. We've spent something close to, what is it now, so something close to, to 18 months trying to prevent that knee-jerk reaction. And if all it's been is delay, then what was the point? Well, there wasn't a knee-jerk reaction, was there? No, there wasn't. But you don't think this so is... There's been this a is... properly considered reaction, consultation around the world, hasn't there? Has there? Hasn't there? I don't see any consultation. American politicians? I see a lot of bullying. Tracking around the world? Yes, but do you see them actually saying anything but, but terrorists? It's either the terrorists or us? Your complaint is that there hasn't been a debate, that the newspapers... No, 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 no. My complaint was in, it was what, eight months ago was that there was no debate. So you've had plenty of debate since then? Oh, yeah. All of which is being ignored. That's my point. I'm here because I'm ignored proud by, whom? by the Prime Minister. Well, he's, he's seen the need to go out and make the case for what he believes in. Yes, that's, and a, and that's and a response to the debate, isn't it? Absolutely. And do you not think that his voters have told him they're not convinced by that? Some have. Somehow, no, 91% country, the country's yesterday, not united. 91% said without the UN, they didn't want to go in. Do you think that's close to unanimous? You were so much aligned with Blair and Cool Britannia, mm -hmm. weren't you? At, no, 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 I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I never turned up at that bloody party. Excuse me. I was never going to be used that way. When I saw Tony Blair, I saw him in Islington before he got into Downing Street, right, when he needed people like me. I saw him personally. I went and had a meal with him, discussed it because my lawyer is a member of the Labour Party. But you supported it, didn't you? When? Then. The supported cool, the, what? The Cool Britannia. I've never, I've never no? believed in Cool no? Britannia. No, it's not. You're not talking to Noel Gallagher or, or somebody from the Britpop age. You're talking to somebody who started 21 years ago. Cool Britannia is a load of bollocks to me, you know? You said, I'm still a believer in Tony Blair. I found him to be a charming and decent man. At what point would you lose faith? In well, Tony if I'm Blair? really honest, I've lost faith in the last five days. You said this three days ago. Mm. But I was trying to be, actually on Sunday I was trying to be I was trying not to come across as too wound up, in all honesty, and what happened was I was quite polite and nobody reported anything, which is not what I'm here for. So today I'm kind of speaking my mind a little more than I did at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning.